Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I'm coming at you with yet another your request video, this time uncovering and going through the concept of a data dictionary. Um, and there are dictionaries in data, um, but that is not what we're talking about today. Uh, data dictionaries, what we're gonna be discussing, are really the idea of, hey, I have a dictionary that has all the information around my data. It's a centralized, authoritative reference that will describe the meaning, the structure, and the rules of data across an organization's systems. Um, so, you know, think of it as a glossary for your data warehouse, your data lake, uh, APIs, analytical models, and it's going to define, you know, what each field means, what data type it uses, uh, you know, valid ranges, how they're calculated, where that data is coming from and where it's going, who owns it, how often it updates. Um, and I'm going to be going through all the things that you would typically include within a data dictionary. Uh, so you have an idea of exactly how they are set up, why you'd want to set up and build a data dictionary and kind of what are the business problems it's going to solve. Um, and then go through some of the common data dictionary providers. So if you want to get started with your own, you know where to go. Uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe and consider joining my Patreon. It helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So what is the problem that you know data dictionaries are trying to solve? Um, and really it's about, hey, you know, when you're dealing with a large organization and you have so many tables and, you know, people might leave the organization um, and, you know, they don't, and someone new comes in, they don't know exactly what this table means or what these fields mean can lead to just a whole cascading issues, right? Um, so an example is, you know, like, hey, revenue, is revenue gross? Is the revenues table uh, recognized? Is it build revenue? Um, you know, different teams may use the same term differently. And if you don't have notes of that in a data dictionary, like you see here up on the screen, you're gonna run into issues where, you know, revenue is reconciled differently, but you're treating it all as reconciled the same way. Um, also, you know, ambiguous or missing metadata, right? So something like NIN, this is something where, you know, an engineer might try and reverse engineer meaning because of a column name or like department ID, right? Um, and they could reverse the wrong meaning. Um, and so it's really important for things, you know, where you're using acronyms or abbreviations to then have a corresponding, you know, kind of full explanation of what that column represents. Um, and also not having this just is going to mean that, you know, you're a new hire or someone coming into a team is going to need to spend a ton of extra time figuring out what tables actually mean um, and, you know, misinterpreting these columns or, you know, can lead to just hey, bad downstream analytics. You can cause the wrong, you know, make the wrong decisions. Uh, and also, you know, if you are try to use data for something that it doesn't have the right type for, right, you can you know run into failed pipelines or outages. Um, and so data dictionary is really bringing alignment consistency and transparency to that enterprise data by recording all your information around what that data is actually representing. So now I want to talk about kind of how this actually works under the hood and the type of data that will go in a data dictionary compared to something like a data catalog, right? So whereas data catalogs are very much focused on metadata management and data discovery and kind of having programmatic ways of extracting this information, data dictionaries are a bit more kind of, I would say, it's less quantitative and more qualitative information around the data, right? And so you have, you know, both technical metadata, you know, the column names, data types, table relationships, schemas and partitions, nullability, primary and foreign keys. You're also combining that with business metadata. So human authored information like business definitions, uh, documenting the calculation logic for different fields, usage guidelines for how fields should be used in different situations, um, the owners and stewards and who is actually in charge of and responsible for information, um, and also things like tags, you know, is data PII, is it sensitive, uh, financial critical, um, and something that also people are starting to build in here as well are things like, you know, distribution statistics, value frequencies, example values, um, and these are really important, you know, hey, when I'm trying to work with data for ML purposes, right? You know, having things like quality test results available on hand for every piece of data in your organization, while, you know, it's obviously a difficult task to, to do is really valuable because, you know, you have an immediate understanding of, hey, what is the quality of this data set? Can I rely on it? Um, and, you know, can I actually, you know, train my ML models and expect good results from it? So now what are the benefits and why would you want to implement a data dictionary? Number one, improving, you know, trust and data quality and, you know, just faith that data 
is what it says it is, right? When definitions are clear, people stop second guessing metrics and pipelines, um, and it just reduces a lot of doubt in you know numbers produced by an organization. Um, also, it helps reduce a lot of engineering waste. It helps reduce the time that you're going to have people you know hitting up data engineers and breaking them out of their flow to read Slack messages like what does status CD mean. Um, it also makes it really easy to enable governance and compliance. You know, if you have clear classification of PII, retention needs, and sensitivity levels for your data, that's going to make it really easy to do things like report on that and you know make sure that when it comes time to compliance time every year, you have all the right information available for the regulators. Um, also, accelerating project delivery, right? You know, if you're an engineer and can confidently consume an upstream table without ambiguity on what that upstream table actually represents, then you know you're going to what get away from a lot of the waste that normally comes, you know, in the beginning stages of a project. Um, and then also better cross-functional alignment, right? You know, you don't need to go ask someone on another team what their data means. You can just read the data dictionary and all of your teams are going to be operating from the same shared definitions. So you don't run into those issues where, you know, you're thinking about the same word, but the definition of that word is, you know, different to two different uh, teams. Um, and then finally, you know, preventing metrics drift. So as systems evolve, the dictionary really helps to lock in that authoritative meaning and evolve, you know, with the uh, data as your organization grows and changes. So now, what are some providers you can use to start implementing your own data dictionary? Um, so first one I found is Seconda. Um, this is, you know, a relatively new tool. Um, it was actually founded in 2021, and it's actually was just acquired by Atlassian. So it's now going to be under the Atlassian umbrella, which is you know, another data cataloging tool. Um, and where Seconda excels is, you know, layering in a lot of the AI contextual search capabilities across your data sources. So you can discover, you know, relevant data sets and also understand what the data in that data set means through natural language queries. So it's automatically actually documents, uh, you know, what your data is doing and how it's changing and reduces some of the manual maintenance overhead that normally comes with building a data dictionary. Um, so some of the key features are, you know, automated data profiling, um, so it automatically and will assess customer data quality um, with statistical insights and anomaly detection, which is one of the harder things to implement on your own. Um, also brings in data lineage capabilities, and again, that you know, kind of AI-powered contextual search, um, so you don't know, can just query your data like it's a chatbot. Now, the next tool I've uh, been looking at is Data Edo, um, and so Data Edo is a nice kind of lightweight database documentation tool that supports many databases and kind of you know basically has the viewpoint that it should be a catalog of catalogs, right? So you have one global data catalog and data dictionary that understands your data across all of your different systems. Um, and it has really comprehensive entity relationship diagram generation and business glossary definition integration. So you can you know, both visualize relationships and also bring in more of the business definition as well. Um, and some of the key features of it, you know, are data profiling, having comprehensive, again, analysis of data quality metrics. You have a lot of pre-built connectors, uh, and extensive database support. So, you know, I think for MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, all the legacy data-based uh, providers, or not legacy, but just older database providers, you know, even IBM DB2, right, are available here as connectors. Um, and, you know, you have kind of the marriage of, hey, you know, more old school data sources and, you know, new school data visualization tools. Um, this helps bridge that gap and really, you know, gives you that flexibility if you're working at a more, you know, on-prem cloud split enterprise company. Now, another really, you know, just kind of big data, metadata, data cataloging, data dictionary tool, you know, Alashan has part of its platform, a data dictionary tool, um, and it's quite good, right? So it you know, provide you a central repository with an emphasis on more collaborative data discovery and also machine learning powered insights. So the idea is, you know, you roll up again, you know, all of your different metadata into uh, Alation um, because Alation's strength really relies on its ability to combine automated metadata harvesting with crowdsource knowledge from data engineers. So, you know, you're it's constantly learning from how people are interacting with your data and then capturing that information and saving it so you have information available to understand you know, not only what data sets do, but how you know, they're being used. Um, and also, you know, automated lineage um, and metadata capture. So as data is changing or new tables are generated, you're capturing those as well. Um, and so if you're at a large enterprise, you've probably heard of Alation, um, you know, and it is one of the, you know, I'd say lo longest, it's been around a while um, and has been one of the more battle tested tools um, for doing data cataloging and data dictionary as well. So now finally, I just want to leave this video off with some kind of general best practices for building a useful data dictionary. Um, number one, automate 
automate automate as much metadata as possible use scanners to populate technical info only the information of business logic you know what fields are being used for should be manual everything else should be as automated as possible because relying on people to do this kind of data collection is a losing battle um, you also want to make sure you're you know assigning things like data stewards right make sure that every piece of data and domain owns its own definitions and so there's a clear person to go to when you know if a definition doesn't exist you know who should be in charge of making it um, also, making it accessible, right? Integrating these into engineering workflows, you know, populating the relevant docs out to GitHub pages or, you know, Atlan or Relation Search um, or, you know, DBT docs, right? You want to make sure that this information is really easily readable across your organization. You don't have to go into some, you know, one single location to re read it. That's, you know, some backend database. Um, also, keep it versioned, you know, just like you version your data, uh, dictionary should also be versioned and evolve with schemas and business changes as well. Um, to make sure that, you know, hey, if something changes and you revert that change, you also are reverting that data dictionary and everything stays in line. Um, also, lineage, especially now where so many tools can produce open lineage, um, seeing how a field is produced eliminates any ambiguity. And so having that lineage information, if possible, is just going to make your life a lot easier. Um, and then finally, use tagging and classification, you know, label fields like PII, sensitive, deprecated, core metric, whatever the key taggings or classifications are for your business, make sure that those are, you know, used across your organization or always implemented um, for data that meets those qualifications. Um, and that is really all I have for you. I'm just kind of a quick beginner's guide to what a data dictionary is. Hope you enjoy this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.